If you were brought up in the 90s, you may have remembered a game called Road Rash on the Mega Drive system, where you race around and beat up other drivers with chains, clubs, and with your hands and feet. What a game! Well, 25 plus years later, we have a game called Road Redemption that aims to bring that classic style of gameplay back, along with other little tricks into the modern day. But does it capture that classic gameplay from the Mega Drive and PlayStation 1 days? Let's find out. Back in 2014, developer of Pixel Dash Studios reached out to the public to help fund their game Road Redemption. I saw it and I was like, this is like Road Rash. Buying! And in March 2014, they released an alpha for the backers, and then in October, they ventured into early access on Steam for the general public. And now, in 2017, they finally managed to make it here for full release. So, what do we have? We have a game where you ride a motorbike, kick and grab other drivers and smash their face with clubs, poles, decapitate them with swords, shoot them in the ass with guns and plant C4 on them and watch them go... Yep, this is Road Rash for the modern day, alright? But is it any good? Well, yes and no. Yes for parts for bringing back the good old days because this game really does capture that Road Rash feeling. But as an overall game, it lacks polish and content you kind of expect more in games these days. And being in development for as long as it was, you kind of wish there was more to it. Now, don't be holding your bike helmet in shame and crying to the theme tune of Street Hawk just yet. Let me explain. You have a classic race mode with a few stages to get medals on, but the main game is a semi rogue light game. So, when you die, you lose all your cash and mods you bought, but the XP you gathered in that run you can spend on permanent upgrades that boost your stats in order to help you for your next run. So expect to die a lot, but you will be stronger, faster, smarter for that next run. Road Redemption offers a few mission types in the main campaign to help break up the simple race to first position mode. There's get a certain number of kills, survive the race, boss fight, stop the convoy, things like timed events. I do wish there was more mission types, but it's enough for this type of game. Each level and run will be different every time you start a level, it will randomise its layout along with mission types and bikers. You have a few environments from simple desert highways to more wasteland looking ones with night and day and snow effects, which don't affect your handling from as far as I can tell and you get to race on top of buildings, which is nice, but nothing to really get excited about. You just kind of wish there was a little more in level environments. With weapons, you have your usual array of bats, spades, pool cues and swords where you can decapitate other bikers. It's fun, but also challenging at times. There is some strategy involved as you can attack either side of you, so you have to pay attention on that front and not just button mash. It's also a good idea to mix up your weapons and not just stick to one as using a sword will take longer to kill a biker if they have their helmet on, so using blunt weapons will knock the biker's helmets off, leaving their face exposed for a nice sword decap. But it ain't all sunshine and rainbows because they can do the same to you as well. But fear not, you also get a deflect move and a classic sidekick that can get you out of trouble, which other bikers can do to you as well, so watch out when they start to hit you. The deflect move is your friend. Use it, like, all the time. You also get guns and pipe bombs and C4 which is very lols to use, but aiming with guns and driving at the same time can be very hard to manoeuvre. Oh and one of my favourite things, grab a biker and face slam him into her own bike, it never gets old. It's the most satisfying thing, like, ever. Graphically it's a bit meh, it does look like something from the early 2000s. It shines in a few places but nothing special, but then again maybe that was the idea to keep it simple. But the glitches from getting stuck in the environment is very annoying and happens way too often, and the bike physics when you hit something can send you flying into the world of hate. I will say this though, Road Redemption is a bad game, but in a good, bad kind of way. It's so stupid, but the thing is, it's fun, because that's what matters for this game. It's not trying to be the next motor GP sim or anything like that. You know, it's just a good, bad game. That I recommend. So in light of that, we give Road Redemption a 6 out of 10. It's an arcade indie game priced under 15 quid, you hit people off bikes and it does it so well. If you're looking for that classic road rash feeling, then you will love it for what it is. It's cheap looking, but fun.